On the quantum level, all kinds of weird things can happen. You have the uncertainty principle, quantum entanglement, superpositions, wave particles and as today's topic, quantum fluctuations, or quantum flux for short. Let's say you have an empty space called a vacuum. A vacuum is by definition empty space. There's nothing in it, no water, no air, no atoms. In our universe there are no perfect vacuums devoid of atoms. On Earth there will always be the medium of air. Even in space there's still a medium. The interplanetary medium has a density of approximately 11 atoms per cubic centimeter. If you went to interstellar space, there would be 50 atoms per liter. If you went to intergalactic space, the medium would reduce to only 10 atoms per cubic meter. The closest thing to a perfect vacuum in our universe would be an intergalactic supervoid. These places have the lowest density in the universe, with matter being spread as trace as one hydrogen atom every 60 meters. But even this isn't a perfect vacuum. If you zoom in to the quantum level of even this space, even this won't be empty. On the quantum level you have virtual particles popping in and out of existence everywhere. They are virtual particles because they only exist within the time frame allowed by the uncertainty principle. These particles borrow some energy from the vacuum to come into existence. These particles will appear in pairs of two, one particle and its antimatter counterpart. Because the antimatter nullifies the normal matter, the two particles will almost instantly annihilate each other. The annihilation gives off energy which is returned to the vacuum. Think of it like this, the vacuum is zero and the particles are opposites of each other, thus one and minus one. One and minus one together equals zero, and vice versa. But if the vacuum is empty, how does it contain energy? Vacuum energy is an underlying background energy that exists in space throughout the universe. It's kinda like zero point energy, which I have previously talked about in the video where I explain why helium can freeze. The universe doesn't really care that much whether or not the space is truly empty as long as the sum of everything in the space is empty. This allows these particles to exist, and this brings up some interesting things. Since these particles appear randomly, statistically they could appear in a configuration of anything. Well, it's incredibly unlikely that, let's say, a self-aware entity could appear out of nowhere due to quantum flux right behind you. Statistically speaking, it still has a probability of doing so. Even though its appearance would have a probability of approximately 1 to the negative 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 60%, this number has almost a Googleplex zeros. But, if you were to wait long enough, a Boltzmann brain would appear. Simpler forms of matter, such as a hydrogen atom or neutronium, are more likely to appear. In fact, given the amount of time the universe has existed, several hydrogen atoms should have already appeared out of nothing. So where are they? The sum of the universe always has to be zero. For the amount of matter to appear, an equal amount of antimatter will have to appear, to return the energy to the vacuum. This is in accordance with the first law of thermodynamics, which states, energy cannot be created or destroyed only transformed. This applies here in the form of antimatter appearing with it to return the energy to the vacuum. As for Einstein proved, matter is just energy in a different form. To get back to the topic that particles can appear out of nowhere, this can result in some interesting theories. In December 1973, an article by Edward P. Tyron titled Is the Universe a Quantum Fluctuation was published. In this paper, Edward Tryon said our universe may have originated as a quantum fluctuation of the vacuum. Yet, the idea of the universe coming from a quantum fluctuation or quantum process was not taken seriously until inflationary theory came along and was able to explain how our universe could inflate from a tiny particle. The idea that our whole universe could have appeared due to quantum flux is mind-blowing. But would it not violate the first law of thermodynamics? Not necessarily, the universe is still relatively young considering its expected life expectancy. The whole universe equals, or at least should equal zero meaning that in the Big Bang an equal amount of antimatter was created. Most annihilated instantly, but not all matter was annihilated. How do we know that? Our universe still contains matter today, otherwise I wouldn't exist to make this video and you wouldn't exist to watch it. Particles making up our bodies would be gone. So how come not all matter annihilated? There are dozens of possible theories to explain this. The universe expanded very quickly and its density decreased rapidly after it was born. It's quite possible particles were too far apart before all could have annihilated. Entire galaxies could exist today made of antimatter. As long as they are isolated enough, they could exist peacefully. Not interacting with our matter, they wouldn't annihilate. Also, since the universe is likely much larger than we can observe, it's very possible that the antimatter is located outside the observable universe, yet still inside the universe. We have hereby touched upon one of today's greatest unsolved problems in physics. Baryogenesis. Why does the observable universe contain more matter than antimatter? Or maybe the universe is just trolling us, which honestly wouldn't have to be such a surprise either. And that's it for today, guys. Don't forget, matter appearing and disappearing out of nowhere can be used for some pretty hilarious homeworks excuses and EG out.